Hi, it's Pat Miller, Gabby Gourmet, stir crazy in the kitchen with my pal Lynn Thielen of Roth Living, Hello. and of course, the star of the show, Chef Ben Davis of Roth Living, who we intrude upon to make our days brighter. Christmas is over, Hanukkah is over, and we're working on, I think everybody is celebrating the end of 20 <laughs> I know. any time in all the years I can remember. We've made it, you know, Yay. now here's to, I know, right, we've made it. Now here's to hoping that, you I, know, I, at, I'm not very at the stroke religious. of midnight. <laughs> I bet I sure pray for a great year for all of us. Yeah, me we too. We'll all be healthy and maybe this monstrosity will go away. I but, know. Thank God for people like Ben, who gives us great hope, and all of our friends, I should say. I don't mean it that way. That <laughs> we have something to look forward to, even something different to eat. And for me, I'm just saying in advance, stir crazy in the kitchen, thank you for the friendship of Lynn. I love you, Ben. I love, love you. you right back. And let's love you right back. back. But, and what do you think of orange chipotle bison meatloaf? Ooh -wee. Oh. I, I, I have, think, you know what? I was going to say, I have like a very traditional meatloaf recipe that I do make. I do make, <laughs> but I'm, I'm I curious. <laughs> I'm curious to hear this twist on it. So. Well, someday off air, I will <laughs> tell you my most embarrassing moment. <laughs> When I used to be a cook live on TV, oh making my a meatloaf. <laughs> I'll tell you why now because it's X-rated. <laughs> what happened? But Ben, oh it's your. Nobody believes I ever cooked. Well, well I'm happy. So uh, you know, this is a great meal that. Um, you can make ahead, you can make the same day. It's really easy to throw together. It's kind of interesting combinations of flavors and you can do lots of different things with meatloaf and depending on which direction you wanna go, you can make it a little spicy, you can make it a little Italian, you can make it, you know, you can add some, some flavors that maybe you uh, like from other types of cuisine. And that's sort of what we've done here. Um, we've taken bison, um, which is obviously very, very lean meat, but obviously very popular. You can find it now in all the markets, whether it's ground or maybe it's bison steaks or bison roasts, all of those things that we can find so easily now that we couldn't have even found that easily. I would say 10 years ago it would have been. Yeah, I did all. Yeah. So you wouldn't have found it. Um, but, you know, meatloaf is really a simple construct. We're just taking those ground meats. We're going to extend them a little bit by adding either it's where they're adding breadcrumbs or we're adding some vegetables or anything like that just to kind of expand the volume of it and then we're going to bake it off so we keep it nice and moist um, and then uh, you know you can serve it uh, as a sandwich you can serve it as obviously an entree um, it can be popular with kids and you know I think for a while meatloaf sort of had that that kind of uh, reputation of being sort of like kind of uh, low grade foods or something that wasn't like, you know wasn't elegant but you know, there's no reason that a really good meatloaf can't be you know, something very elegant and something really fun and obviously really flavorful. So well, even um, like New Year's, if you're having family, as most people sure, are, right? I mean, have it ready and you can eat later, earlier or it, whatever. It, you know, it's, a, it's one of those leftovers like Thanksgiving that you actually look forward to. Like, it's like, oh, I, I love it. That was good. Left cold meatloaf sandwich, all those oh, things. Ooh, ooh. And, you know, so it's just something that we can that we can celebrate just how easy it is to put together. Do I have any thousand islands? We've through the holidays and we've been through all the big to-dos and the productions and the stress and this and that. How comforting is just to have, you know, a nice plate of meatloaf with you can make some, you know, you can make mashed potatoes, roasted potatoes, you can put noodles with it, you can put rice peel oh. off, you can put so many different things alongside it just for a simple, easy weeknight meal. I think this is uh, something that, that people will, people will enjoy. And like I said, we can modify it, right? So when we look at the recipe, you know, the proportions are what are important about keeping it moist and, and holding it together nicely, but you can modify it to your own tastes. Uh, if you don't like the bison and rather just do beef, or maybe you want to even, you know, you might even throw in some of the Beyond Beef if you want to do it as a, uh, 
as a, a vegetarian dish, you could omit a couple other ingredients, but yeah, you could still come up with that. So, uh, so let's get started and in cooking it. So we want to make something flavorful at the base. And what's more flavorful for a base than bacon, right? So diced bacon, about a quarter of a pound, right? So that's, you know, a couple of three uh, thick slices, right? Just putting that into a, a warm skillet. And we're just going to brown that off. And you don't have to make it super crispy. You want to kind of render a lot of the fat, but you also want to, you know, get it just a little bit on the crispy side. I have my pan nice and hot, as you can see. You know, for everybody looking out there, just a quick little sort of appliance use tip. I know a lot of people get nervous about using their ventilation systems because they make a racket or whatever it is, but it's a really good idea whenever you're going to ignite, especially a gas burner on your stove, Turn your ventilation on five minutes prior to igniting that burner, and that's going to keep not only the smoke in your kitchen down, but it's going to keep less grease from kind of flying around your kitchen and landing on things. So five minutes of having that ventilation system going prior to igniting a burner is always a good idea, um, just because it will rid your kitchen of all the vapors and grease and for a lot of it. Um, that's a great idea. Now, another question. You seem to heat most of the pans before you put ingredients in. Does that make yes, sense? Yes, exactly. Can you, so, can you tell you, us? You can yeah. hear me okay, right? I'm just making sure that everything's uh, connected right. I mean, yeah. just, just making sure. Because, can you uh, hear us? Yeah. Is there just a reason that you heat. usually heat a pan? Right, I just preheated it a little bit. You can see now the bacon has just started to crisp just a little bit, but we rendered out a good amount of the fat. So now let's add some diced onion. And a little bit of garlic. So now just browning that off. And again, now when you've added those ingredients, turn your heat up a little bit, just to get those onions nice and sweet. Get the garlic cooked beautifully. So the other ingredients that we've got to go with is we've got some diced up chipotle peppers. Again, if you're a little anxious about the heat or the spice, you can certainly, you don't have to use the chipotle. Um, you can put another kind of chili in there, should you choose to, you can omit them entirely. That's really going to be up to you in terms of what you want to add. But I've got just two chipotles just chopped up. I've left the seeds in. Um, if you want to take the seeds out, that'll make it a little less spicy. But really, it's up to you at this point in terms of what kind of spice you're going to add. Um, and then got a little bit of an orange liqueur, whether you're using a Grand Marnier, you're using triple sec, you're using Pont Flow, any of those orange flavored liqueurs are going to be really nice. If you don't want to put any alcohol into this, just get the juice of one orange, just a fresh orange, squeeze the juice, um, and, use, and you can use that to help deglaze the pan and give you that little bit of brightness that citrus always lends. And as we're here, you know, in December, um, citrus is really beginning to be the, the the fruit that we should be going to more often now, you know, so we're using blood oranges, we're using all the lemons, limes, and, you know, all the different varieties of oranges, ruby grapefruit, just a great time of year for that. Did so you we'll, put the chipotles in already? Not yet. So I want to just put it the so. just a little bit more um, before we start adding the chipotle in. We want to get just a little bit of browning on our onions. Um, so we want to get that going. So as we're reviewing the rest of the ingredients, we've got some chopped sage and some chopped fresh oregano. Um, that's always good. Salt and pepper, obviously a must. Now, here's one of the things you'll notice in the recipe that may be different than what you're used to. It says fresh breadcrumbs, right? So what that means is, is not the stuff in the can, not the dried breadcrumbs that you use for putting on the outside of your, uh, you know, your chicken parmesan or maybe you're you know, bread something, you want to use um, a nice loaf of bread, 
take the crust off and just grind it up in your food processor. And then you can actually put it into a Ziploc pack and bag and put it in your freezer and just store it frozen. The difference is it's much, the texture is much softer. Obviously there's a lot more moisture because you never dry out the bread. And it really does help with the texture for your meatloaf or your meatballs. It really does, it makes it less um, kind of gummy and pasty. It just gives it a much better texture. So make sure you're using a fresh bread from, um, and like I said, it's just a good loaf of bread, take the crust off and then grind up that that center part. All right, so now we've got a little bit of browning here. You can see up close there, we've got, we've got our nice brown on, the, on our garlic and our onion. So now we're gonna add our chipotle. You just wanna stir that in so it blends with all of the other ingredients and you get a nice coating of the chipotle. You don't need to cook this very long. Now, here's the fun part. Here's the, the fun home cook. So if you have a gas range, you want to set your heat on about medium high, so you have a good, good amount of flame under the pan, right? If you have an electric range or you have an induction range, you might need to get a, a, a striker, a lighter of some kind. So you're going to add your liqueur, the triple sec, or the grand marnier, whatever you have, just pour it in the middle of the pan, and then you tip it back. Oh, sure. And just quickly, and I am not to be trusted. Well, that's yeah. fun. You want to just quickly burn off that alcohol, let it reduce ever so quickly in the pan. That looked great from here. <laughs> yeah, it looked great from my house, too, and I'm not doing it. <laughs> So again, just a quick reduction, just to get rid of just almost all the liquids you can see. It's nice and taking a lot of it out of there. We're going to shut off our heat. And now we're going to transfer the going to transfer the contents of the pan to a separate bowl. And then to this mixture, we want to add our herbs. So there's the oregano, the sage. We're going to add our salt and pepper. And the last thing we're going to add are those fresh breadcrumbs. You want to make sure you do it, you know, in this order. So once that's in there, we're going to take our eggs. We've got three eggs. Are we adding the breadcrumbs before or after the eggs? Before. Basically, what you want to do is let the let, let the breadcrumbs kind of take a little bit of the heat out of that mixture you made in the pan. We're just gently whisking. Use a fork, just kind of just beat your eggs ever so lightly. And you're going to add that to your mixture. So that's everything but the meat, right? It's everything but the meat. So you want to make this is. In French, we call it a panade, when you just make a, an extender, right? When we're adding eggs and breadcrumbs, or we can use different ingredients to make this mixture so that we can extend and moisturize the meats by adding this in. So what we're gonna do then is just mix that together. I'll show you here in a second what it will look like. And there it is, it's just beautiful. We've moistened everything down. And again, because we're using the fresh breadcrumbs, it's not as dry as it would be if we were using, say, you know, a canned breadcrumb or something like that. So we want to make sure that we're using fresh bread. Okay, so now here's our meats. So in this case, we've got one pound of fresh ground bison. And we've got, I'm using a, 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 a pound of ground pork um, just because of the, the bison is so lean that adding the pork, which is a little fattier, um, is going to give a little more moisture to the meatloaf. If you want to use straight bison, by all means do that. You could if you feel that um, if you're going to use 100% bison, then you could sneak in an extra egg just to give it a little more moisture. Um, if you want to use beef, yes, Gabby. Uh, it does, I'm sorry, 
If you're using mixing in pork or something else, is the total still two pounds? Yes, it's always going to be two pounds of ground. So meat. just take away whatever in that. Exactly. Is. Okay. And you can substitute out whether it's beef, pork. You want to switch something out? Maybe you put a little ground turkey in there. Um, okay. You can do that as well. Um, you can do but all that's of those. Not things. very moist either. Exactly. There's These aren't really like devices. So now we're going to add to that the mixture that we made our panada bacon, chipotle, onions, all that good stuff. And now here's the fun part. So get the kids in the kitchen. They're going to mix mm -hmm. it together. Use your hands, like for goodness yeah. sake. It's just it's going to give you so much trouble. more <laughs> satisfying results. And you want to get it really well blended. You want everything to be completely incorporated so that if you're using two different cuts of meat, two different grinds of meat, that they're blended well together. Um, and if you're using, um, and you want to make sure that the panade is equally distributed so you don't have pockets here and there of just the bread mixture, you want to make sure that it's completely homogenous when we look at the, the blend. All right, so now, gotta clean off the old gloves. What I've done is, and you can use a loaf pan if you want, but I think it's easier. I think you get better crust if you take a baking sheet and you line it with some aluminum foil and you now just put the entirety of the contents here. And now you just shape it. Give it its traditional shape. I love meatloaf. I'm excited for this. I like meatloaf too. I like everything like that. <laughs> All right. So now we've got it shaped nicely. We preheated an oven, 350 degrees. The last thing we're gonna do before we put it in the oven is we're gonna take some ketchup. <clears throat> ketchup? Yep. <laughs> Come on, it's still America. A uh, uh, little, little more of that orange liqueur. We're going to add that to our ketchup. Stir that together. And then just brush it on. Oh, wow. The outside. You know what? Nothing. I've never had a homemade ketchup that is as good as ketchup. Right? <laughs> that we you know that flavor, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess we just all lived on it. Yeah. I have to say that when I worked in France many, many years ago, they used to put this on the table whenever there was an American in the room and they would joke uh, <laughs> sauce American because they assumed we put it on absolutely everything we ate. My oh father my God. did. So we used to laugh. They used to laugh. I don't think too funny. Those of us who are from America thought it was particularly funny, but <laughs> yeah, we took it in on, on the recipe here, it has you cook the meat for 40 minutes and then put that ketchup on. All right, I'm gonna alter that for you, Gabby. Okay. All right, so then pop it into the oven. It's gonna bake for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, right? Just going to depend on your oven how long it's going to take but you want to if you have your instant read thermometer and you want to check the middle 155 degrees is going to be an ideal temperature for cooking that um nice and through nicely all the way through but also it's going to be nice and moist in the end so we have one here earlier. Mm. oh i didn't see it i was writing a note nope <laughs> Put the ketchup on now. Yeah. So you can oh. you've got a nice glaze to it after, like I said, about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes in the oven. Can you put his close? Can you put the close up camera on? I can. Please. Why did I get my back? That looks delicious. Oh, what a perfect dinner. Especially with. Friends come. Oh, wow. So again, nicely 
cooked all the Beautiful. way through, super moist, you know, not only from all the ingredients that we added, but from adding that extra brown pork, it's got that extra fat there, keeps it nice and moist. And again, 155 is a perfect internal temperature for cooking um, your meatloaf, your meatballs, whatever you're doing that to. It's going to keep it nice and moist, but it's going to be really delicious at that point, too. So you can just yeah. see. Uh, and if you were doing this, like, for a gathering on New Year's, I mean, you could even have rolls and you could have sandwiches or mm. plain or however. So great. It holds beautifully in a warming oven if you want to make it ahead of time. Uh, you know, you can... I wouldn't bake it the day before. I would only bake it, uh, you know, cook it the day. Right. Right. It. I wouldn't reheat it the next day um, because I don't think it loses a little bit in that reheating. But uh, from just, you know, how easy this is, it will hold beautifully in your warming ovens. So just a, it's a real simple, easy uh, weeknight dinner that uh, I think it's oftentimes gets overlooked and maligned by so many people. Lynn, for him, it's a weeknight dinner. For you and I, it's a special occasion. I know. I was just going to uh, say that. Then it's going to be a big, the big oh, to do. Wow. <laughs> well, yet again, stir fry, stir crazy in the kitchen dot com. Subscribe, mm -hmm. and you'll get recipes. And you'll every week you'll see the video on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. And we've had a great time so far this year, and we're all looking forward to sharing next year with Crazy. And yep. I can't get it out of my mouth today. Stutter crazy in, in the kitchen. Hopefully, it won't be a year that will be quite a stir crazy. We'll, have, we'll get a little reprieve, right? And I'll get still a be little bit waiting for your recipes and everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Please have Thank a great New Year's. Stay healthy to everybody, to all our extended families and our friends. Be well. God bless you. And see you next year. See you next year. Bye.